on the Welcome Matt podcast. I'm your host, Matt Caldwell. I'm here today with Carolyn Nestling. Hi, thank you so much for having yeah. me on. Yeah, thanks for coming by. Oh, of course. We're going to play some games. So first, I want to chit chat with you for a second. Okay. Uh, so I know you do sketch. I know you do, do. stand up. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about your sketch group. Um, so we're called Kiss the Dog. There are... I think at last count, maybe nine of us. It's <laughs> good, healthy number. Yeah, no, that's an appropriate number for a sketch troupe. Um, yeah, it's it's fun. It's a little tricky to wrangle that many people. Yeah, the the troupe has sort of been in existence, I think, for probably about five or six years now. They yeah. are, so we all went to Humber together, as you did as well. Yes, Humber I'm, College. Humber College. Couple of grads. Yeah, well, grads. Yeah, we did pass all uh, of the requirements. So well, maybe one of us did don't tell my mother this but no I, no she I, I doubt your mother is the intended audience of, well i don't know what she's maybe. into these days who does really <laughs> but um i'm missing two credits but technically i am an alumni of humber college as is everyone else in my sketch troupe um so but i i um was just sort of a little fangirl of theirs for a couple of years and then was asked to fill in on a show oh nice and then uh, I just, you just kept on showing just up never after left. that. Just yeah. go backstage they, and put on a costume. And... Yeah, I, uh, they never explicitly asked me to leave. And so I just continued going to rehearsals. Yeah. And then they just um, kept casting me and things. So Perfect. So now here we are two years later. And what is the uh, <laughs> writing process like for a group that large? I imagine it must be a little challenging. It, it is tricky, yeah. There's a lot of voices. So what will typically end up happening is that we sort of someone will write a sketch just by themselves, bring it to a meeting, we'll do a read through, and then we kind of do um, kind of group notes. Everyone will just sort of talk about what they liked and didn't. And, and But there are a few of us that are a little more um, inclined to, to write and edit than others. So yeah, um, sometimes it just ends up going with one other person and they'll sort of figure out how to fix it or punch it up or whatever. But uh, yeah, sometimes the process is difficult with that many people. Yeah. And uh, you do a lot of stand-up? I do, yeah. yeah. I would say maybe a little bit more than sketch, so... Uh, what what <laughs> comics do you uh, enjoy watching? In Well, I'll, I'll tell you in Toronto right now, my favorite comedian is Chantel Morostka. I mean, yeah. I tell everybody that. Like, obviously, I love Maria Bamford. Obviously, yeah. I love Tignataro. Obviously, I love Louis C.K. Like, but yeah, stand-up's going good. Sometimes I'm sad, but sometimes that helps the joke writing process. Yeah. What you is know. your process for writing? Do you write down everything you think of and then revisit it later? Yeah, basically. I like to use my notebook as sort of like a... I write everything like long form. It's basically just like a big diary. And so like I just... I'll write out all my jokes like sort of verbatim kind of word for word. And then I'll sort of go back and like edit it basically like yeah, as if it were out, yeah, yeah like cross out things and circle things and draw little arrows to other stuff and and it might connect to another <clears throat> joke that you have yeah, yeah yeah so yeah I guess that's basically my process I tend to I like to be fairly well prepared when I'm on stage I don't typically tend to get a lot of just going up and and riffing on things like yeah. some some comics find that that's a better process for them is they just sort of will have premises and then just go up on stage and yeah. and follow those and see and where it takes do them crowd and, work and yeah, stuff like that. yeah. So i'm not really good at that i if no. i go up and i don't know what i'm talking about then you're gonna know that i don't know what i'm yeah. talking about it's gonna be hard to watch so yeah i like to i like to sort of run through my my jokes out of time and stuff perfect are you ready to play some games yes All very right. ready yeah the first game that we're going to play today is a little Mary Screw Kill. <laughs> and uh, the little twist we're going to do today, we're going to have the Joaquin Phoenix edition of Mary Screw Kill, where we take three of the characters that he made popular, and those are your options. So today on Mary Screw Kill, we have Commodus from Gladiator. What a villain. Johnny Cash is your second option. Mm -hmm. Or... The character he played in I'm Still Here, which was himself. Himself, essentially. Um, oh, wow. What a tricky pickle this is. <laughs> tricky pickle. Tricky I believe pickle. he played a tricky pickle once, he too. Did. Didn't he did, yeah, yeah. He was nominated for a Golden Globe for that. As well, you should be. Mm hmm. I don't know if I could ever play a tricky pickle. That what what fruit or vegetable would you play? I mean, I think I'd be a decent raspberry, to be honest, but. Yeah. 
you know, anyway, yeah. we, can, we can dream. <laughs> we can all dream of being <laughs> We can all Barry. dream. Maybe it's time I wrote that screenplay. <laughs> Sassy Raspberry. Sassy. Um, the sassiest and the juiciest. The sassiest raspberry in all the land. Yes. So you have Johnny Cash, <laughs> Johnny Commodus, Cash. and himself from I'm Still Here, where he was a uh, an actor who decided to be a hip-hop star. Right. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Okay. I mean, no offense to Commodus, um, but I... He I, wouldn't like offense. I, no, he certainly no. would not. Um, but, I mean, I feel like... I know he's probably the obvious choice for Kill. Yeah. I think. But I have a lot of reasons. I think outside of the fact that he murdered his own father. Yep. Only once, though. Ju- well, yeah, just the one time. Yeah. It was pretty brutal. I yeah. mean, he suffocated him With in... a pillow or in, no, his in, arms? No, in his own chest. Pulled him close uh, like he was going like to hug a him. hug. W- didn't let go till he died. Strangle hugs. Strangle hug. So brutal. So rude. I wouldn't want to marry him because it's like he's in love with his sister. Yeah. He's quite whiny. Yeah. He's a pouty guy. Real wiener. Yeah, he real is wiener real wiener. about wiener. everything. Just kind of a complainy, not not a doer, you know? Yeah. I feel like um, he's always kind of slunched over, pale. He's like dark under the eyes. I feel like he probably has some vitamin deficiencies. Just well, like... it was the ancient Roman time. Yeah, so, so I mean. I think they had a lot of lead in the pipes, so yeah. there was some lead poisoning going around. Probably a lot of health issues that I yeah. just, you know, I wouldn't want to be dealing with. As we grew old. Yeah. Together. You don't want to get <laughs> no. him all. You don't want a sickly husband. No, you really don't. I mean, I don't know what would be protecting me from having these problems, too. But Yeah. Um, so how would you kill him? Would you let nature take its course? Or would you uh, speed things up? Maybe a strangle hug? Maybe. A, yeah, maybe a strangle hug. I mean, he certainly would deserve it. Yeah. God, what beautiful karma that would be. Give yeah. Him a, give him the old strangle hug. It's all circular. Yeah. And then would you take over as empress? Yes. Oh, wait. I think that's but, how things go. Like, whoever you kill, so you take what, their job. So I, okay. Yeah. So as I wouldn't have to be married He killed to his him. dad, you get right, he gets right, a right. job. So I kill him, I get the, the job. thing. Yeah, you get the emperor, empress. Perfect. Well, then I could institute a democracy, which is what his dad wanted anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Strangle hug. Strangle yeah. hug Commodus. Strangle hug Commodus. Mm-hmm. So you have two options left. You have Mary and you have Screw. Your options are Johnny Cash mm. for one. And uh, I'm still here, which we can just call him himself, but out of work. Himself, but cr- but a crazy person. Yeah. Um, but crazy entertaining? F- hilarious entertaining. Yeah. But how entertaining would that be? to wake up to every morning i don't think yeah you just want to wake up to him one specific morning maybe one specific maybe every once in a while maybe sporadically we wake up together so you go to one of his concerts yeah maybe he's a walking with benefits i don't know yeah um but i'm struggling here because johnny cash Mm -hmm. loved june with all of his heart yeah for his entire life and I just feel like I, I don't know if I would want to like interrupt that. I mean, that's a soulmate. That connection. was a match. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so you couldn't necessarily take over the role of June Carter. I don't know. I mean, if she passed peacefully and then gave us her blessing. Yeah, in a song. In a song. Yeah, it would need to be a which, song that which, they would sing as a duet, yeah. and then you would come out mid duet and. He, she would pass exit him to and, me, yeah. exit, and then die of a painless disease. Yeah. Whichever one that might be. The happiest of the diseases. The happiest one, just really... Um, and then is just, you know, in heaven smiling down upon us for the, the rest of our lives. Then yes, that's, I, yeah. I would marry uh, Johnny Cash. I mean, he, he was, like, addicted to a bunch of stuff. What, what, yeah. What was his thing? I think pills. It was pills. Booze. Yeah. Yeah, I could deal with that. Prison. P- yeah, he, he was, was a in bit of a prison a addict. Yeah, yeah. He Both did. performing and sleeping in. He did love his prisons. Yeah. That's a thing. Yeah. But you know what? Everyone has their little kooky yeah. things. Yeah, their niche. Their little, <laughs> little niche things. Their little weird things that they're into. I can't. Uh, 
I wouldn't hold it against him. And what weird things would I'm Still Here guy be into? Oh, God. He was just a mess. But you are going to screw him. But I am going to screw him periodically. Ah, okay. Every once in a while. Maybe when I'm down in New York. Yep. For the weekend, which I've never done. We've never had a reason. No, except now that my casual boyfriend, Crazy Walking Phoenix, mm-hmm. lives there. Yeah, and we just have um, very... Romantic trysts? Would it be romantic? I don't know if I would describe any of this as romantic. I, f- I feel like he's a bit of a disgusting pervert. Yeah? Just, yeah, he did a bunch of really weird stuff. Oh, the stuff he yeah, did. You know, just some really, really bizarre yeah. things. And I would leave. I think leave. he was nude for yeah, a lot of it. Yeah, he was nude for a lot of it. And then, you know, after he would, like, make me listen to his rap songs. Mm-hmm. And I'd have to sort of nod along, like, okay, this is... This is a song. This is... A, is it? I don't even know. I can this only assume something. that you would be filmed... During this by Casey right. Affleck. Right, Casey Affleck would have to come with us everywhere yeah, you, that we that went. That would be part of the union as well. Mm-hmm. So that's a thing. I mean, he's fine. But yeah, there wouldn't we wouldn't be able to talk about very much if we're just like being filmed all the time. Yeah. Just, it would just have to be all the weird sex and then the... The, the leaving songs. right after. And then the leaving right after. Um, Maybe getting breakfast. Yeah, maybe getting breakfast, maybe getting breakfast, maybe getting into a fight at breakfast, uh-huh. maybe I storm out. Yeah. That's a scene. That's yep. something I would watch. Um, tell yeah, you have to make good TV. Mm-hmm. Then I'm never going to see him again, and then, oh, look, three months later, I'm back in New York seeing him again. You know how it goes with crazy walking Phoenix. I do know how it He's goes. He's always with... just reeling me back in. Yeah. With. With a net. With a net. I think he would actually <clears throat> have a net. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Just up around the house. He's yeah. like, this is my nut. Yeah. Don't ask questions about it. No. But it's Or you'll you. wind up in or it. Or <laughs> this, this is the net. It is the net. <laughs> the internet. Okay, that was Mary Screw Kill <laughs> with Carolyn Nestling. <laughs> she is going to kill Commodus. I'm going to kill Commodus. Yeah, you are going to sh- screw Joaquin Phoenix as a hip-hop artist. <laughs> <laughs> If you are going to marry Johnny Cash. I sure am. Okay. That'll be nice. Yeah, that will be nice. All right, we are back on the welcome mat with Carolyn Nestling. Hi. Hey. The next game we're going to play is a little thing called Spoiled Movies. Mm -hmm. That's where the guest gives a review, a full, complete synopsis, uh, all of your thoughts. Go ahead and spoil the movie for me because I like to know what's going to happen before I go to the movie. I do too. I like no surprises Mm -hmm. at all. I don't want to show my emotions. No. I want to know if somebody important is going to die so I can go to the bathroom, Mm -hmm. come back, and just pretend it didn't happen. Yeah. No, that's... So, uh... (laughs) That's, that's how you watch the, movies. I love spoilers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the your, the movie you're going to spoil today is called The Fate of the Furious. The Fate of the Furious. Yeah. yeah. Um, so this is the the next installment in the Fast and the Furious um, franchise. Yes. Um, I'm actually really ha- happy that you've given me this platform to, to yeah. talk about it. You are a huge fan of them. I huge fan. And... Uh, you know, I gotta tell you, I think um, fans are gonna be really disappointed really? by this film. Yeah. First off, there are no cars in it. No cars. There's, are there trains, n- planes? N- there's one plane, um, but nothing happens to it. They're just, it's just a comfortable plane ride. Um, yeah. Not a single car crash, nothing. Um, it's a total departure from every other movie. Um, basically what happens is uh, all the f- Fast and Furious pals. Yeah, the gang. Um, the whole gang. The family. The family. The family. It really is a family. Yes. So the Fast family, uh, they get together and they're like, we don't want to drive our cars around anymore. This is... Out of gas. Yeah. No, we're, we're done with this life. Mm-hmm. Um, tell you where the money is. 
flipping houses. Oh, yeah. Wow. So they decide that they're going to start um, flipping houses. Like it's yeah. a friggin' HGTV show or something. Yeah. Um, so then one of them, Vin Diesel, yeah. gets a Dom, call. Dominic, Dom, yeah. Gets a call that his uncle has passed oh. that he's never met before. And what do you know? He's left him a mansion. A mansion? A mansion. This uncle, this secret uncle, uh, has left him a mansion. So he gets the gang together. He's like, this is perfect. We'll flip this mansion. And then whatever their plan is for it, they're going to like go all live on an island or something. Yeah. The retirement. Yes. So we get there. And guess what? The friggin' mansion is haunted. Oh, ghostly mansion. Ghostly mansion. Friendly ghosts? No. Oh. Horrible ghosts. Horrible. Everyone dies. That's their fate? Yeah. In, in just like horrific ways. This oh. is one of the most gruesome movies I've ever seen in my life. Really? Just, they take no prisoners. Just disgusting. Tell just me how absolute... uh, The Rock dies. Oh, my God. How okay. does The Rock die? Because I, I see him as like an immortal beast. No. I'll tell no. you what happens to him. He falls down the stairs. Well, he's pushed down the stairs by a ghost. Ooh. But that's not all. This giant boulder. I don't even know where this thing came from. Haunted boulder. A whole haunted boulder. It comes down the stairs and it rolls over him and it squishes him onto the stairs. So he cut, the, the, the boulder rolls away and then the rock is just in the, this weird little zigzag. So the rock is killed by on, a boulder. By, by a boulder. <laughs> That's kind of ironic. I know. Yeah. There was a little on the nose with that one, I think. Yeah. They could have done like... something else, maybe yeah. water or another no, rock yeah. or paper yeah. or scissors of no. some sort. Yeah. I don't, they were trying yeah. to say something there, I yeah. think. Very clever. Um, very clever. Anyway. So uh, what role does Jason Statham play in this movie? Ooh. He's uh, the character of Deckard Shaw. He was... Uh, Shaw. He was... Uh, he had some... You know, troubles with the gang in the past. Ooh, he did. Right, right, right. I remember now. You know what? He's actually the first one to be killed. Wow. Right when they walk in the door. See, the the plot had some holes. I, I think that he was killed almost immediately. Just a gust of wind knocked him right over into a window and mm-hmm. just ripped all the skin off. It was really horrifying. Wow. Um, was it CG or did they actually... No, I think they actually did it. I think I think he doesn't have a face anymore. Uh, yeah. That's smart. Um, real method actor, from what I understand. But yeah, and then they just stayed in the house. They just kept... Like, one person's dead. Oh, and they're like, well, still gotta we, flip this. we didn't really like him anyway. He was a terrible house flipper. So, no, yeah, we're just going to stick around. So yeah, he didn't have a very large role in the film. Oh, that's interesting to hear. Mm-hmm. Um, the the sole survivor is Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell. Mm-hmm. Turns out he's the uncle. He was the uncle he the whole the time? He was the uncle the whole time. He's not dead. He just, the whole flipping houses and then luring him there was his plan to, good kill, plan. to kill everybody. That is a good plan. And then go to the island by himself with all the cars. Now, were there actually... <laughs> ghosts or was yes. this like a scooby-doo thing where it turns out it was the crazy uncle the whole time in an elaborate costume that real ghosts but um with an allegiance to kurt russell i think everyone should have an allegiance yeah yeah to kurt russell so he controlled the ghosts and then did his bidding and then at the end just lit the mansion on fire Mm-hmm. Which is fine, because everyone inside it is dead. Um, and then he goes to live happily ever after in, like, Aruba or some shit. I don't know. Aruba? Mm-hmm. That's quite an interesting island, yeah. I hear. Yeah. Yeah. Aruba, but Jamaica. Then, mm, oh, boy, I want to take you. Yep. That's the li- those are the lyrics. Those are lyrics. Is so it? Kurt Russell is just a beach boy from now He's on. He's just a beach boy. But then, here's the thing. We see some cars at the end. Okay, I lied earlier. There's a couple of cars. We see a couple of cars like at the after end. the credits? Yeah, it's sort of like, okay, there's a beach, there's a few cars, it's a little wink. You're like, yeah. all right, there's going to be another one. Oh, yeah, there yeah. always is. We're going to get back into the car thing, I think, next movie. Anyway. Yeah. 
which should be coming out in a couple of weeks, I yeah. believe. Mm-hmm. So uh, what rating would you give this on the uh, moldy pumpkin meter? Mm, I'm going to give it a 6.5. 6.5. That's very generous. Yeah. I mean, you know what? It, it, was a, it was a surprise. It was sort of an unpleasant surprise, but I would say, like... The cinematography was great. Mm -hmm. The performances were excellent. Any awards, maybe? I mean, Charlize Theron. I don't know if you've ever heard her scream. Yeah. Um, But she's received several awards for that. I think she got an Academy Award last year. For screaming. For just the scream. Yeah, best screamer. So she has a, I would imagine, a nomination coming up for this one as well. The Scream Awards. The Scream Awards. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. The Actors Scream Guild Awards. Yes. 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 So I would nominate her for that in a heartbeat. In one, in one, <laughs> heartbeat. one heartbeat. Just one heartbeat. <laughs> so uh, do you believe this is directed well? Did the director make interesting choices? He did. You know what? I'm going to say, um, for what a strange movie it was, it was very interesting to watch i think there were some bold choices Mm -hmm. um aesthetically it was very pleasing the mansion was beautiful and haunting and scary it was a good horror film you know it was a pretty good horror film yeah i think yeah now that these characters are all deceased Mm -hmm. what will happen in the next movie do you know i mean i don't i guess it would just be the ghosts and the furious I like that title. Right? Yeah. So they bring them back. Ghost cars. Ghost races. Ghost. Ghost. Vengeance. Yes. Yes. Which is the best kind. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, I think we're probably going to be seeing some, some ghost stuff yeah. in the next. All right. Uh, any last words? If you're going to suggest that somebody watch this or not watch this, what, what would you say? You know what? I'm going to say just for curiosity's sake, um, go check it out. But, um, you know, leave, leave your whatever you thought you knew about the Fast franchise. Leave it at the door. Leave it at the popcorn stand. Because you're going you're gonna to be on a ride that is not a car. No. It is a ghost. It is. You're going to be on one of them ghost rides. <laughs> you're on a ghost ride, ghost ride. my friends. That spoiled movies with Carolyn Nestling, The Fate of the Furious. We're back on the welcome mat with Carolyn Nestling. Hello. Hello. And the last game that we're going to play today is what would you do if? What would you do if? So the option that we have today, it's, it's a strange one, but... What would you do if you farted out of your mouth instead of your ass? Oh my god, this is a tricky one. It's a dream come true, maybe? Yeah, yeah. dream dream come true. I mean, do I... What else comes out of my mouth? Is it just the farts, or...? Yeah, just, just... farts. <clears throat> and things you still eat properly and Every and Everything else is the yeah, same. Yeah, yeah. Do I burp out of my butt? If you wish. Let's let's say that your burps and your farts have are switched. Switch tolls. So okay. Um, I think the first thing I would do is go on the hunt for um, whatever kind of disease made somebody not able to smell. Okay. So yeah. I would go and then figure out where these people lived somehow because they would live together yeah there there must be some sort of database where people have to say what diseases they have right and then also their addresses and stuff yeah yeah that 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 exists exists. they have to go around door to door Mm -hmm. and introduce themselves like hi my name is brad and i can't hear yeah yeah so there's a there's a list i consult this list and then i would set up dates with all of them ah so like a tinder for people who can't smell because i fart out of my mouth Yeah. So, I mean, my first concern is dating, obviously. Yeah. Because dating someone with bad breath is already. I think I heard that the average human farts like 15, 20 times a day. Yeah, and then that's all coming out of your mouth. Yeah. Um. So, I mean, that's a that's a big problem. That's going to be a hindrance on your social life. Your work life too. Your work life. I think a lot of those things I can manage. I can manage the same way I manage burps by just I don't know leaving the room. Mm-hmm. Or into my shirt, very casually. Just um, mouth fired into your shirt. Just mouth fired into my shirt. But dating, yeah, I mean that you know it'd be quite a lonely life. 
So I'd really need to hopefully be compatible with somebody who could Couldn't just love smell. Yeah, could, yeah, would just have to love me for me because they didn't know the difference. You know, yeah. that's all I would really do. I don't think I would um, try and find a cure or anything like that. I think I would just... No cure? No. And uh, what excuse would you use for always leaving the room? Like, I'm sorry, I need to go. Well, I mean, I think I would just be honest. I'm like, I'm a mouth farter. Oh, so you wouldn't hide it? No. I mean, we, you know, we have to reduce the stigma around these things. So would you give interviews mm-hmm. and really become a uh, public fee- f- public uh, figure for I, I mouth would. Farters? I would. I would hope to be the, the poster lady. For mouth farts and then yeah maybe maybe tour around yeah maybe give speeches i see a lot of memes in your future yeah, yeah. i love memes that's the main way i communicate so, yeah um, just give memes as speeches yeah speech actually memes. yeah maybe maybe it would be more like uh like something like this just talking on the internet because again i wouldn't want to maybe be in the close quarters with other people you can't often. smell on yeah. air yeah yeah so, I mean, presumably, if I fart out of my mouth, I have a bit of a butt breath. Just always. Yeah. <laughs> just think, butt breath. Just butt always. breath pretty much always. You could I chew think. gum. I could chew gum. Yeah. When, what gum is your favorite? Well, my favorite gum is probably cinnamon. Mm-hmm. But I don't know if, you know, we might need something a little bit more powerful for a butt breath. Yeah. So, do you see yourself starting a support group for other people who suffer from this affliction? Oh, absolutely. I think um, community is the most important thing when you know when you have something terrible like this. It's so so important to be able to join with other people who are just like you. I mean, it wouldn't be like a. It would probably be like an internet chat room. Yeah. Because again, the smell. The the smell. Yeah. But I I would be happy to host that. We could all Skype in. Yes. Again, I am an advocate. I am a. I'm here for everybody, for all the butt yep. breathers. You're gonna search them out. You're yeah, gonna... seek them out. I can advertise. Yeah, I feel like once we reduce the stigma enough, you know, people will come to me. Yeah, you could get out into the mm-hmm. community, into the fresh air, mm-hmm. and have have they... uh, have meetings where we all stand quite far away from each other with their your mouth closed. With our mouth closed. Yeah, maybe we just uh, hold up signs and stuff that says i support you i support you there would be a lot of clever signs for yeah i think there would be a lot of great some good puns yep we have a sense of humor about ourselves i think i think you should i I think we do i think think you've you've been through a lot yeah i think uh i feel like being a butt breather you know gives you a good healthy perspective on, on things we all got a bit of a a funny side to us, I think. It's all about perspective. A lot of comics in yeah. the uh, in the butt breather community. Yeah, and imagine doing that into a microphone, though. Oh. Yeah. We'd have to get special microphones made. Yeah. All right, that's what would you do if you <laughs> farted out of your mouth instead of your ass with Carolyn Nestling. Sounds like it would make me a better person. I think, I think. <laughs> I think it totally would, yeah. <laughs> I want to say thanks for coming by the podcast. Thank you so much for yeah, having me. This is really fun. It was a lot of fun having you, totally. Yeah. Yeah.